Uh, Pastor Matt, let me start off by asking, you know, uh, what's your history with youth ministry? You know, were you a youth pastor? Mm -hmm. And if you have any stories that you'd like to share from your time as a, a youth pastor, share them with our, share them with oh, our, yeah. our, and our listeners. Yeah. So this story is funny now. It wasn't funny when it happened, <laughs> but uh, I was a youth pastor uh, of a, a large church in Huntington Beach, California, and we rented a bunch of houseboats on Lake Mead. It's in Las Vegas. And we did like a, a week of camping out on the lake. And I didn't know how to drive uh, a houseboat. And so the weekend is over. I'm driving a boat. I'm coming in and I'm super nervous. Vegas is super windy and I can't control this thing. So the guy's like talking me in, you know, it's kind of like the pilot died and, you know, and I'm in an airplane and, and the guy down in the, uh, the tower is talking me in. And so he's talking me in, talking me in and he tells me floor it, floor it, floor it. And to my right, there's this speedboat. Now, in Vegas, there are just uber wealthy people. This boat had to be several hundred thousand dollars. Well, I don't make the turn, and I hit this speedboat. Think church budgets. Ooh. I hit this speedboat. It's fiberglass. Fiberglass. I can hear it snapping. I, I hit the, like I hit it, and we drag. And I can, all my kids are like, oh, Pastor Matt's going to get fired. Pastor Matt's going to get fired. You know, they're all laughing. And the guy jumps out of the boat, loses his ever-loving mind. He's cussing me out in front of all these kids. He's screaming at me. And so, you know, they call the cops. The police show up. The guy is irate. And so I'm just standing there. I'm like, I'm so fired. The church, you know, I don't know if the church has insurance for this. And the police officer turns to the guy. He says, can you calm down for a second? And the guy calms down. He says, can you read me what that sign says right there? to the left and the sign says no boats except for houseboats he said your boat shouldn't have been here matter of fact he says you're gonna have to pay the damages to the houseboat the guy loses his mind i didn't have to pay for anything not a dime i thought i was fired gonna go to you know i mean it was so glorious god came through so i totaled this guy's boat and was not responsible at all because he was parked in the wrong place. That, my friend, is a bona fide miracle. Amen. God <laughs> is, is good. <laughs> which, which, for a youth pastor to experience that, mm. I tell you what, it, it would have been miraculous had you not been fired, right? Yes. It, 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 because that might have been a thing, but it was a miracle that that sign just happened to be right there. And, and that is fantastic. But that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk and jump in and talk about miracles. Amen. Well, all right, Pastor Matt, welcome to the Youth Ministry Motion Podcast. Yes, thank you so much for having me on. Appreciate it. And I'm stoked to have you here. Uh, we were discussing earlier, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here because your book uh, on miracles is um, <laughs> came at a timely point for me. Uh, but I would also like to ask you, uh, why is a, why a book of miracles right now? Why does the world and why does the church, why do believers need a book like this right now? Yeah, yeah. And, and for me, just so you know, my spiritual journey, you know, I'm a Southern Baptist. And so we certainly believe in uh, the miraculous, but not like some denominations do. And so I kind of stumbled into this. And what I found, and I talk about in this chapter one, um, so many young people today and, and people in large define themselves as nothing. I don't believe anything. I'm not, you know, Presbyterian Baptist. I'm yeah. not, I'm not a Christian at all. And what miracles do is they, they don't have all the answers. Miracles don't provide all the answers. What they do is they help us to ask the right questions. And who is this? How could this happen? Um, you know, I think that, you know, people always want to know, well, why didn't I get a miracle? But in the book, why did you get a miracle? Well, why does that happen? And so, um, you know, chapter one starts with, and I know you read it and I appreciate that, but just a, a friend of mine that's just not interested in church, just could care less about God, the church, whatever, thinks his life is perfect, uh, got COVID. Uh, I mean, he was in the ICU, almost in a coma and FaceTime me. And, you know, in the book I, I talk about, I said, so well, let me get this straight. You want me to pray to a God you don't believe exists to heal you? D d am I understanding that? You know, and tears are running down his face as he has these gigantic tubes pumping oxygen into his nose. And he said, yes. And he went home two days later, healed and well. And um, man, and so I just, I just, you know, I believe, you know, like if you're young students, 
just start having them ask friends at school, can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? What's going on? So many of their friends are anxious, depressed, um, sometimes suicidal. How can I pray for you? And inviting the God of miracles, the miracle man, Jesus, to make changes in their lives. And then, and you know, you read the book, but what I said is Jesus came first doing miracles. And so we've kind of flipped the script. So for us, he's the Messiah, right? But back then he was the miracle man. So they weren't sure if he was the Messiah, but they were sure, even his critics. Okay, this guy does miracles. And then the, those that hated him said, well, he does it by the power of Satan, which is just bizarre. But they never said he doesn't do these things. And so I think if we're going to have a great movement of God, we need to see miraculous signs and wonders to, to bring people back to the church. There's been too much hypocrisy, too much scandal, uh, you know, too much just vanity in the church today and people have given up because so many key leaders keep falling and embarrassing you know every time i see somebody fall i'm like oh great here we go again and so we need an unveiling of the power of god again to, to you know my hope is one last great revival before the lord returns that that's what i would love to see yeah and I, that's such a great point there matt because uh, when when especially talking with youth ministry and talking with youth pastors who are praying for their own miracles by the way yeah amen this is uh, they're praying for miracles right now as well in their own lives that um that it's a time like you said to bring that thought back that god is still active in our universe and the way yeah. how we engage that and how youth pastors engage that and to be honest with you, there's some youth pastors who shy away from it sure they, they don't talk about it because they're like, well, I don't have any answers. I don't have any yeah. answers to this. Uh, first of all, I would recommend getting Matt's book, Everyday Miracle, uh, to help you with that, youth pastor. Yeah. So, uh, so be aware of that. Um, but as we, I, I love the quote you kind of, uh, you kind of uh, sewed it into what you were saying. This is miracles don't give answers; they demand bigger questions. Can you unpack that a little bit? Yeah, because I, I, I think that, you know, when Jesus does something, what do the disciples ask? Who is this? And that's, man, I would much rather have somebody questioning who is Jesus than just not even asking or or, or, or being concerned. And, you know, I, I live in California. 80, 90 percent of Californians do not attend church anywhere. Um, and they're not interested. They don't need God. They don't feel like it can add anything to their life. But I tell you what, everybody has a loved one or a friend that needs a miracle, either a health miracle, a financial miracle something that they're overwhelmed with, they feel overworked and stressed out. And all I'm encouraging Christians to do is to say, hey, can I pray for you in the name of Jesus that he would do something miraculous in your life? And uh, my wife and I, we were um, just sitting with uh, two atheists. One was raised Jewish. One was raised Christian, but, you know, um, fallen away from God, but battling severe mental illness. And I'll tell you, I said, would it be okay? I looked at the husband and was Jewish. I said, would it be okay if I prayed over your wife in the name of Jesus? He said, of course. And as I laid hands on his wife, guess what he did? He jumped off the couch and he joined us laying hands on his wife in a Jesus that he's rejected. And that's the thing is when we read the gospels, what motivates Jairus? What motivates the centurion? What motivates these non-believers, people who far, are far from God? What motivates them to reach out to Jesus? Desperation. Yeah. And and I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, are you desperate? And, and here's what I say. If you need a miracle, what do you have to lose? Like, you know, uh, the woman, Natasha, in the book that was told by the leading cancer hospital in California. It is one of the leading cancer hospitals in the world. You have three weeks to live. We've done all we can. And her doctor said, you're just unlucky. You know, that was four and a half years ago. And she's still on staff. She still works with us. And, 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 and here's what I said. What do you have to lose? God could say no because he's God, but he could say yes because he's God. And so um, I don't ever know what God's going to do. And anybody that tells you they do I, is selling something. But I, I know what he can do. And, um, and you know, uh, over the last chapter, I saw God bring a young boy back from the dead. It, it happened right in front of my face. And I, I have no category for that. No category for that, except I saw it. It happened. Yeah. And, and, it, and it wasn't me and a bunch of pastors. It was me with three surgeons, two anesthesiologists, and six nurses, mm -hmm. translators, 
and uh, some communist police from Vietnam that were going to take us to jail. <laughs> so, so I know it happened. I was there. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I, and I love how you bring about the point too of of being open to prayer. And I've, I've I resonate that with so much. There's yeah. a lot of things people won't receive. People will re won't receive your preaching, but they will receive your prayers. Yes. Right. They, if you ask them, are you willing to at yes. least? invoke the name of Jesus in this moment. Are you willing? I find that most people are, even if they're atheists, even if yes. they're sure. Yeah. What if there's no loss to you? I mean, yeah. you're offering something to them and 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 whatever God is, you know, putting in them at that moment says, Yeah, I'll I'll mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. And you come into a you know, you come into that place with them where where God could do something really awesome. Amen. You know, if if we, if we as believers would simply say, hey, can we pray? Can we yes. simply ask God to do something? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that's I think that's a a great point. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of youth pastors listening and watching uh, who just need to stop for a moment and, and ask their student if they can just pray with them. Not everything's covered from the pulpit. Right. Not everything's you can't cover everything. It's not just preach it and they're going to get it. Maybe you just need to stop and and hold off for a second. Say, hey, let's gather around the student, or let's go ahead yeah. and stop. Let's pray around this kid. Yes, let's believe God for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's involve other kids. You know, when I think about Mitch's miracle, I didn't yeah. do that prayer. It was, it was him and three college kids and they anointed him with oil, prayed, and he was dramatically healed. I mean, he's still in my church. He's, he's still well. So it's 10 years now, you know, and, yeah. um, and on no drugs, no treatment. Um, and he's a walking six foot eight miracle. So. <laughs> Yeah. And I have to tell people, if you want to, uh, I'm not going to ask you to t tell the whole story there, yeah. but the whole story, read the yeah. whole story, buy the book, read the whole story. I was encouraged reading all these stories. It's, it's amazing how much, you know, we think we have faith. We think, you know, at least I think I have faith. And then I'm reading this. I'm going, man, I'm encouraged by that. I'm encouraged yeah. by these stories that I'm reading. It encourages my faith mm -hmm. because, because, you know, Mitch's story is one of, uh, you know, a bunch of stories in this book. I think it's yeah. going to encourage a lot of people and get people yeah. back on track to where they're not grinding. Where yes. They're not grinding in the flesh, but, but they're saying, Oh, oh this is a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, I can pray for this. I, I can believe for this. Yeah. I think it's, I think your book does, if it does nothing else, it provides that service of saying, look, you have options here. You don't have to grind. Yes. Thank amen. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, you tell a story, you, uh, and of course, this is filled with scripture, it's filled with right. stories from, from scripture, and you share about Jesus being woken up from his nap uh, yeah. because of the storm. And I like the, the contrast here. Uh, it says with his own, he says, he says, why don't you care? The disciples ask, well, why don't you care? Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says, well, why don't you believe? Yeah. And why are you afraid? Oh, you have little faith. Why should believers not be offended when God pushes back on our faith? Right. Yeah. Because... The whole point is growing our faith. And so, you know, um, I think I said in chapter one, you know, s some things, you know, are learned through truth, but other things are learned through tears. And God often uses pain and fear to grow us. And, um, you know, I, I think I said, um, gosh, I've read this book enough and wrote it, but, you know, they, they were they were called as disciples, but they became apostles in the storm. And that's when they grew up. And so. I think that we, we need to, as we're screaming at God, where are you? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? We need to prepare ourselves to listen for what he's asking back. And and yeah. again, the, the faith there, this is what's so important because so many people in the charismatic circles, they've been shamed. Well, you didn't have faith for your miracle. And I say, whoa, 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 whoa. We're never called to have faith in what he will do. We're called to have faith in what he can do. Yeah. And you know, the disciples in their story, Jesus is in the boat with them. The Messiah, the son of God is right there. So, you know, I would have thought, well, God's not going to let this boat go down with him in it. So we're probably OK. And so so that's what I think is so important. And, and here's the thing is, is God has a message and a sermon in every point of our suffering. God is constantly speaking. God is constantly preaching. Um, you know, I talk about in the book that Jesus is called teacher and class is always in session. So exactly, exactly. And 
And the fact too, you go we'll switch to another story. It says in the miracle of the demon possessed boy, mm. and it, it applies to what you were just talking about when you talk about suffering. It says sometimes the problem with our faith is not that we don't believe in miracles, is that we struggle to believe in Jesus. Yeah. And when you said earlier in the book, too, I think it was earlier in the book where you said suffering is another level. Right. It's another level of growth that we go through. That there's something about Jesus we don't understand mm-hmm. only but through suffering. Right. But I want you to talk about this. It's that we, sh- it's not that we don't believe in miracles. It's that we struggle to believe in Jesus. Can you, can yeah. you explain that a little bit? Yeah. It's just whenever, when, you know, whenever we are hurting, our pain becomes our focal point. And, and I understand that. Um, and I've, I, I've suffered and you, you've read the book, you know what I've been through. Yeah. Um, but it's so easy in your pain to, to, to forget who Jesus is, you know, um, I think I said in the book, when your pain is shouting, God is whispering mm-hmm. and he's telling you, um, you know, it's it's through our suffering and through our pain that, that we find Jesus. And um, I just think it's it's so important that we focus on, OK, what has Jesus done? Who is Jesus? And if I can center myself on that, even if I don't get my miracle, I can trust, OK, he's with me. He's never going to leave me. He's right here in this. And, and, and I'm going to get through that. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's the deals that we have to remember. And once again, perspective is everything, right? Yeah. We don't understand in the moment. We're so this way. We just want the yeah. miracle. We just want yeah. the thing. And yeah. it's hard to grasp the idea. And you mentioned this through the book as well, that the ultimate goal is that we're being conformed to the image of Jesus Yeah, through the process. And it's really hard to yeah. grasp that in a human sense mm-hmm. when we're going through it. I know, I yeah. know it's me. I, yeah. I, I'll speak for me. That it's super hard to do that to uh, to think of the oh this is a this this it's hard to think this is a teachable moment <laughs> right yeah 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 man and it's um and it always is you know um, Romans eight twenty eight God uses all things for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose and we just have to trust that that we may be conformed to the image of His Son yeah. and life Jesus does not guarantee. There will not be suffering. As a matter of fact, he guarantees the opposite. He says, there will be suffering, but take heart for I've overcome the world. And so he's with us. He's in it. And, um, you know, that's why the, the chapter on when God says no mm. is so powerful because when Jesus returns, there's no more pain, no more tears, and no more no's. Everything will be yes in Christ. Not in this life, but yeah. in the next life. So. Yeah, I remember, and I, I love in the story too, where you where you tell a couple. I think it was the couple that was seeking adopt. Uh, I don't know if it was yeah. adoption. Adoption, or, yeah. Where they said you got your yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a yes out there. Yeah, Let me amen. Encourage you, youth pastors. There's a yes out there for you too. Yes, okay? absolutely. Um, so can I go back to Natasha real quick? Because of all the stories that I read, I mm. think that was most gripping for me. Yeah, because it was like a ten. It was like a a, a ten year process, I think, for her that she went through. And when you talk about her soul cry, yeah, the, the the point that she got to, and you talk about this in the book of being honest, that you reach a really baseline mm-hmm. gut level. What are you asking from Jesus? Yeah, and that she is yelling. Well, you tell you tell that moment because I like I said it gives me chills. That when she yells this and yeah. when she's in the room with you and you hear that, mm-hmm. that gives me chills, man. Yeah, yeah. So I call it the soul cry. And and what it is, it's when there's nothing, there's nothing in between you and God anymore. You don't care how you sound, you don't care how you look, you just need to be heard. And um, you know, I talk about that in chapter two when they told me I had throat cancer and I just was so angry with God. And then with Natasha, that's the second time I heard it. And she came to us for prayer, right? So she's coming to me as the spiritual leader. And I think there are three pastors with this in that meeting. This is a couple of years ago, so I don't remember the exact number. But I remember as she began to pray and cry out, there was nothing left for me to say. I was merely witnessing a soul hurting, crying to her heavenly father saying, I, I want to be healed. And, you know, I go over in that chapter why repetition is so important because it helps us find our truth. Yeah. And, um, you know, God is a good father, so he doesn't give us everything the first time we ask. And so there's a process by which 
when we repeatedly come before God and we, we finally get to the point where we know what we want to say and we're ready to say it. And that's what Natasha experiences. You know, I think in the book I, I talk about like she's beating a drum and this drum beat is, 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 is bouncing off the gates of heaven. Then it's going through the gates of heaven. And then it's before the throne of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And she's heard and she's healed. And, you know, I, I thought about putting her MRI, a picture of her MRI in the book because she looked like a Dalmatian dog, cancer from head to toe. Wow. Um, and I, you know, ultimately decided not to do that. Um, but, you know, she's still with us. She's still, you know, alive, doing well. Suffering, though, from 10 years of treatment. Yeah. I mean, I, I chemo can save your life, but it also does terrible things in your life. And so... Um, but just this idea of, you know, there's something that's so important about suffering and pain that allows us to connect with God and the soul cry is, is, is when we get there and we're all on a, you know, you, you, you say this to young people, everybody has a different bottom, you know, all oh, they hit bottom and then you find out, no, 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 they, they got another basement. And yeah. so I think it's that point when when you finally come to the, the bottom of your life and you're like, okay, I can't fall any longer. And that's when you cry out to God and that's when he meets you. And again, I'm not promising that he's going to solve all of your problems. Yeah. And and I, I'm very clear about this in the book. All miracles are simply an extension. I mean, think about Lazarus, right? <laughs> he got raised from the dead. Then he had to die again at some point Yeah, because that is life. And, and even the Lord, our Lord had to die. That's what it means to be human. And so what we're asking for is extensions of life. And, and I believe an extension will come if there's a purpose. You know, God doesn't just do miracles for no reason. You know, like that young boy that he brought back from the dead. I didn't know this, but God wanted to plant a church in that city. And so he used that miracle to plant a church, to change lives. Oh, my gosh, this is this was crazy. Uh, it's not crazy. It's Christ. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that, too, that that you, you mentioned that in the, in the book, too, it's not about the right words. I mean, right. our, our, once again, yeah, it's a mystery. Yeah, we man, can't yeah. comprehend. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good word. The intentions of God. Right. And you mentioned that, too. It says, look, it's not about the right words. It's not about it's, it, it, it's not about those things. It, and you mentioned this, too, about being patient, being persistent. You mentioned about the widow and the judge, which yeah. is a great chapter in and of itself. Uh, the fact that we that we like we have to bang that drum. Amen. We got to bang that drum, man, uh, and see our way through uh, and, and and, you know, let God let Christ take care of those things. We can't determine outcomes as pastors, even though people expect us to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they expect us to have all those answers because yeah. we've read the book. Yeah. And what they don't know is we don't understand every everything yeah. in the book, nor Amen. do we understand what God is trying to do. But the fact that you make the point too that that God does things on purpose, He's doing things with purpose, and we don't understand the yes or the no or the wait until later. Yeah, right. Is that is that fair to yeah. say? Amen. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, and I think one of the things I want to encourage all your listeners is I hear this all the time: God didn't answer my prayer. And what I say in the book is there's no such thing as an unanswered prayer. Every prayer is answered with a yes, no, or wait. You may not have liked the answer, That's but right. it was not unanswered. So, yeah. yeah, I've got a lot of uh, I got a lot of those. Yeah, I got a lot of those answers I didn't like. Yeah, uh, amen. Yeah, and we've talked. God and I have talked about it, and uh, He just sort of smiles at me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what uh, I don't know what that is, but He He just smiles and kind of like gives me a wink and says, "I'll get back to you on that." Uh, uh, many of our listeners, being youth pastors, working with teenagers. Uh, are eager, I think are eager to experience God's power. They're, they want to do, uh, you know, have a, a, um, a right framework for miracles, especially when talking with young people. Is there a chapter in the book that you say, you know what, this might lean more into if a youth pastor wants to have some sort of deeper understanding or connection, you know, with God uh, about sharing about miracles before they share with their students. I know that there are a lot of youth pastors who want to quickly go, I need to share about miracles with my students. And they're going to yeah. be, and they're writing down notes. And this is the message. They go, this is the message for this week. And yeah, yeah. Uh, they're doing all that. 
But it goes deeper than that, I think, right? Because they need all of us youth pastors mm -hmm. before we get up to teach, right? We we have to have a, a framework and an understanding, and a, and a theology and all those things. Is there a chapter in the book that you'd say, you know, this might this might hit a youth worker pretty well? Yeah, I think it's the chapter on the complex nature of healing and the demon of legion. And I think what I would encourage all youth pastors and, and all pastors in general is that healing a human being is a complex pro process. And sometimes God wants to do more than just a miracle and a prayer. There is a spiritual journey to be undertaken. There is relational healing. Um, you know, you think about McKenzie, the uh, sex worker, that it took 10 years for us to hug. <laughs> 10 years because healing the heart is a long process. And so I just would encourage uh, so many of your youth workers, kids are facing issues today that no youth pastors have ever experienced and ever seen. Um, but Jesus has, you know, think of all of our young girls in our youth groups that are cutting. It is an epidemic today. Well, guess what? Guess what Legion is doing? He's cutting himself. So Jesus faced this 2000 years ago, but there was this process. And I think we're you know, we need to help families. Uh, like I can see you're wearing glasses. And I, I say this to parents all the time that are really, really worried about medication or, or, or counseling. And, and I say, well, do you not have faith to see without your glasses? And they'll say this, no, I need them. Okay. And your child may need counseling and they may need medication. And that's okay. Now, here's where I think medicine's gotten it wrong. And uh, you know, a lot of your young buff athletes, I think, will relate to this. You can't just take steroids and get buff. You have to take steroids and work out. And so here's where medicine is just so wrong. We're treating all of these young people with these medications, and we're not teaching them how to work out their heart, their soul, and their mind. You need both. And yeah. um, it's not helpful. And I think pastors need to know, and I would say this to every Youth pastor, you're not a therapist. You're not a psychiatrist, and you don't have to be. And so what I would do is find therapists, find psychiatrists that are faith-based, that have a category for the Lord. Uh, Dr. Amen that I talk about in the book, he's a Christian. He's one of them, and uh, he's really expensive. He treats Hollywood out here. But, um, but people flock to him because he yeah. understands that people are not just cars we're not just biological mechanisms we're spiritual beings and so what i would just say is just before you try to help somebody just go to the lord and say lord i can't do this i don't have this expertise i don't know what to do um you know the disciples when they try to heal the young boy they say lord why why couldn't we heal him and so go to the lord and say lord i don't know how to heal this person because jesus will teach you what to do, what to say, how to do it, and just be humble and know that at the end of the day, I didn't raise that kid from the dead. Uh, let me just tell you, there was nobody in that room more surprised than me when that, that little boy woke up. But I know the Lord can do it. And and I've prayed for others and, and they didn't rise. They died. You know, I, I, I've experienced both. And so I've got to stay humble and just, and, and just, I just tell people, I'm not Jesus. But I know Jesus and I know what he can do. So, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I like to tell people, too, and I'm I'm a realist in this yeah. way. I yeah. say, look, hey, look, listen, if Jesus raised everybody from the dead that died, guess what? We'd have a population problem, <laughs> yeah. folks. OK, there's there's reasons why death is in the mix. And like you said, it's a comp. I love the word. It's a complex issue. Mm hmm that we are attempting to that we as human beings want to simplify for our little minds. Mm -hmm. And yet it is it is depth upon depth. It is precept upon precept. And that's where you have to look at the whole process. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just, you know, like a car. Just I just need more gas, I guess. Or I just need a tune up or I just need a thing. And really what you need to do is you need to read the manual to learn how to take care of your car. Yeah. Amen. And, and learn the whole and pieces and parts and all that stuff. You, mm -hmm. It's really about knowing the whole story, not just getting the miracle, which you yeah. do mention, which you do mention, too. You use the story of the lepers. Right. Yeah. Nine leper, ten lepers came, one came back. Yeah. The other nine got what they wanted, but only one was made well. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think there's, you know, maybe maybe it's a one to ten ratio. <laughs> maybe yeah. only one out of ten human beings are gonna mm. are gonna figure this thing out that oh, oh wait, there's something greater going on here. I didn't just yeah. get what I wanted. Jesus, you know, deserves 
uh, maybe some credit or praise or worship uh, yeah. and those things. But as we close out a little bit here, Matt, I don't want to keep you too long here, but you know, there's a lot of youth pastors right now who are praying for their own miracles. They're praying mm-hmm. for their students. They're praying for themselves. Some are praying that some are praying that they don't lose their job. Yeah. <laughs> some are Amen. praying that they wish they'd lose their job. Yeah. So, uh, what encouragement can you offer these folks here today that these youth pastors are saying, look, I want to believe in miracles. I've been grinding. I've been doing everything that every youth ministry professional has been telling me. I've been trying, I've been reading every book. I have been doing everything mm-hmm. I know how to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I am stuck. And yeah. I just, uh, what encouragement do you have for those folks listening and watching today? I would just say I've been there many times and I've felt that many times. And that is part of following the Lord. There are, there are moments of awe and there are moments of deep frustration and disappointment and discouragement. And you have to trust God in both because God is working in both. And, um, you know, it's only when we come to the end of ourself that we become, we come to the beginning of Jesus. And so God uses this long drawn out process. And what I would say to all the ministers is oftentimes I think we think of our ministry as out there and we forget that I am God's ministry. Like he cares about me just like he cares about these students. And so God is working in my life through this process of suffering. Even Jesus had to suffer. Even Jesus was disappointed. You know, the apostle Paul says, I want to know the the power of the resurrection of God. And we love that part. And then the next sentence, nobody ever talks about and share with him in his suffering. It's like, whoa, you know, I wish that verse would have just ended with the first (laughs) part. I want to know the power of his resurrection, but we have to share with him in his suffering. And, and I don't know why, but discouragement is a part of the process. So embrace it. Uh, Don't fake it because if you're always pumped and you're always encouraged, you're a liar. So, or, or you haven't experienced anything yet and just know that God is taking you to the deep end of the pool and thank him for that. He's not just letting you stay in the shallow end, but he's going to move you to the deep end and God moves um, and, and he is moving and he will move and you will be a better leader because of this challenge. God will not waste it. And, um, you know, in the gospel of John, Peter and James uh, Peter and John run to the tomb to see Jesus and they didn't see him. And then it says, Mary shows up with tears and she sees Jesus. There's something about our tears that help us to see Jesus. You know, James and John were on a fact finding mission. I mean, Peter and John were on a fact finding mission. Yeah. Mary was searching for her Lord through her brokenness and she saw him. So she saw him. And I think that's so important oftentimes that, um, you know, it's like the song I talk about, It Is Well With My Soul. Horatio Spatford writes that after he loses all of his kids. It's, it's, it's in, our, it's in our, our toughest times in life will ultimately be our best times with God. And um, so just I just want everybody to know I'm praying for you. Youth ministry is essential. What yep. you guys do is front line. My life was radically changed as a 15-year-old by a youth pastor, uh, leaders that prayed over me, encouraged me. And I was not the easy kid. I was the hard kid. I was the kid that you wished would go to another youth group. (laughs) But God had a plan, and and you just have to trust that. And and it's not easy. And and, and I think the reason that things are hard is, is that God is taking us along on the same journey so that we can answer these questions of these students who don't understand why, why did my mom and dad get divorced? Why was I molested? Why am I depressed? Why am I anxious? Right. If you've never been through any of that, you, you don't have really good answers. And, uh, you know, chapter two, the miracle of God's presence, Emmanuel, I'm with you. And that's the thing that disciples had to learn in the boat. He's with us, even in this storm. And if we can, teach kids to to see Jesus in the midst of their storm. If we can learn to see Jesus in the midst of our storm, uh, you know, youth ministry, they may not be in that place forever. They may not be in that ministry forever, but they will be with Jesus forever. So don't waste this story. So. Yeah. Don't, don't lose perspective. Youth pastors. You're, 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 you're in God's hands. You're, you're with him. And, uh, and I love the fact too, that listen, you know, that Jesus is with us and, and that if we've not been through some of those things, listen, youth pastors, just be with your kids. You don't, you may, you don't have any answers. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's just the presence, right? The ministry of presence. Yes. Be with them. 
be mm-hmm. with them in the moment. Just listen to them. And when you don't have anything else, just say, hey, let's pray about it. Let's mm-hmm. invite the Lord into the mix here and let's see what the Lord will do with this situation that that mm-hmm. I can't do anything about. And maybe you can't do anything about. Yeah. Um, the book, uh, Everyday Miracle, is fantastic, Matt Brown. Let me just tell you, uh, I hope that a lot of youth workers go out and get it. Uh, I pray that, uh, that listen, like I said, it's got in at the end of every chapter, there's a discussion guide. There are questions there. I also mm-hmm. noticed, and in, in, in full transparency, I received a free copy of the book so yeah. I could read it, of yeah. course. And I noticed there's a spot for a QR code. Can you yeah. can you tell me what that what is that for? Yeah. So when the book comes out, it comes out March 5th of 2024. So at the end of every chapter, there's a QR code. They just you know go on with their iPhone, uh, their smartphone, and it'll take them to a link where I talk to them personally at the end of each chapter. Um, and you know, no book is perfect. There's some things that I think I missed at the end of each chapter that I just kind of try to talk about. And and so that we can kind of interact and walk together. I'm a firm believer that the more we know someone, the more we can learn from someone. And so I'm trying to connect with my audience in that way. And I don't know of any author that's ever done that. They've used a QR code, but I'm putting one at, at in every chapter. And so you know, give me some feedback. And, and for those that buy the book, please share it, you know, online, talk about your journey, man. I would love, here's my dream. This book comes out and we just see lives changed, people saved, miracles all over the place, the church encouraged, right? Revival breakout, but people won't read the book unless they hear about it and they won't really buy it unless they hear about it from you. You know, it's like the woman at the well, she says, come and hear that from the man who told me everything I ever did. And so, you know, people are going to connect with the book as they connect with you. Share your story. What miracle were you searching? What did you learn? How did it bless you? And that's how ultimately God uses things. So thank you so much for your love and support. And I was a youth minister. Um, and I understand what you guys go through. I get it. And, uh, you know, I was a youth pastor in Huntington Beach. And uh, California, and it was it was tough, man. But it was great, and I still am friends with some of those kids who now are in their forties. It's crazy. So, well, that's the deal, and I think that's another great point too, though, that the resource uh, that youth pastors why this would be a valuable youth to youth pastors, especially. Not only do you have the discussion questions, the audio books coming out, so you could yeah. use that as well. But then you have a video portion of it that mm-hmm. youth pastor could play that clip. Yeah. You say, oh, hey, let's talk. Let's unpack this a little bit more. Let's yeah. let's show. Let's do. So really, you have uh, multiple youth pastors. You have multiple opportunities to use a resource. And there's not too many resources that offer multiple ways of using it. Uh, sometimes yeah. a book is just a book. And sometimes just audio book is just an audio book. But when you have this layered type of resource, I, I, I'll be honest with you. As a youth pastor myself, I'm like, you know what? That's usable. That's a practical thing that you can use to start talking about miracles and in your youth group uh if people want to reach out if people want to connect uh pastor matt is there is there best ways uh emails or social or anything yeah. like that people hear this and they go hey i'd I love to just ask a question or anything like that yeah the best way is instagram matthew stephen brown uh that's my my instagram hashtag so um you know they can follow me on sandals church all my sermons are for free i do a show called the debrief uh where i answer questions uh and and i love it my the show is only as good as the questions that come in um you know they can go to everydayamiraclebook.com there's some more resources there i think there's an extended leadership guide that you can get on that it's all for free i mean the book's not for free but i tried to pile on as much stuff for free as possible because i get church budgets i get limited resources i understand that and so however i can help the church um you know just I want to do that. So, and I'm grateful to the publisher that they allowed me to put that stuff in for free. Cause you know, a lot of times they want to make as much money as they can. And so they try to yeah. tack that on. So. Yeah, no, I, th- I think your model is perfect. I think, I think the more you can give, I think that shows good faith. And I think that it says, look, let's just throw the whole thing in there. Let's just say, look, just give it to them and let them use it, how they're going to use it. And they can, and it's shareable and it's, you know, all the things there. So Pastor Matt, thank you so much. Thank you so much for writing this book, expressing your desire to share the miracles that you've experienced in your life Mm -hmm. and how it's, I believe it's going to inspire a lot Mm -hmm. of people to start believing more 
Amen. Than, than just the grind, than just mm -hmm. the, I got to, you know, and reading 20 books to figure out. And I hope it encourages youth pastor. I hope it encourages you even now. Don't wait for the book to come out. Just start, start now, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, buy the book in March, uh, which we'll put links to all that pre-orders and all that stuff will be down in the uh, doobly-doo down there and down in the show notes that you can get to it. Um, but start now, start believing for miracles. Now don't, don't wait for the book. Let the book affirm, let the book go. Oh, Oh, that's, that's where we're mm -hmm. going. So be encouraged youth pastors. And uh, once again, Matt Brown, thank you for, for sharing and, uh, and coming on the show today and just sharing your heart. Yeah. Thank you so much, brother. Love you.